So, what is it that we need first of all in order to implement this you know in the, in the digital computer right. We have a storage that stores n1 that stores n2. What we did was we took n1 we added it to n2 yes. right. Yes. So, if you look at uh, what is in the digital computer then right. So, so you, you now need, need an adding block yes. to add numbers actually exactly right not voltages anymore. Exactly. So, I have I have my memory which is basically storing these numbers for me ok. This is my memory and this is storing like we said n1 and then it is storing n2 ok. Now, I have a block here which is what I am going to call the compute engine. Now, what kind of operations can be performed here? Well, it can be anything. In this yes. case, we want to do addition, yes. right. So, one thing that we could do is we would take <coughs> addition, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. So, what do you do here? Essentially, an addition block is you are going to take in our case, we have 3 bit numbers, yes. right. This is A, which is basically 3 bits. Uh, Maybe we will call it A2, A1, A0. Yes, exactly. A2, A1, A0. Then I have another 3 bit input, yes. okay, which is B. Yes. Right. And this is B2, B1, B0. Yes. Right. And this has to produce a result. Yes. Actually, technically, it could be four bits. It could be four bits. Four right? bits, yes. right? But let's not worry about that detail for now. It it is it will produce a sum s three, s two, s one, s naught. Yes. Okay. Yes. So this is my adder. Okay. Now, you take suppose we wanted to do subtraction, right? What would we have done in the analog domain? We would have just reversed. There was the v one or v two, right? Now, in the digital domain, if you wanted to implement a subtraction, you basically need to have a different block that implements subtraction. Yes. Same A, B. Now, I am just going to use this notation to represent 3 bit. It is a 3 bit information A, B and then you will get the you will get the difference, uh, difference. B, B, we'll call it B. Difference, right? Yes. Which is again, which could be some three bit, four bit, whatever. It doesn't matter, yeah. right? So subtraction. Now, if you wanted to do multiplication, you have another block. Yes. Right. So a typical digital computer, right, effectively has all of these blocks. Sure. Of okay. Course. So, mm -hmm. um, in fact, in fact, I can show you something very interesting, right? I will just um, let me just. Okay. Yeah. So, I will show you this just uh, this is not uh, this is not part of the syllabus technically right uh, compiler output yeah ok. So, you just look at this because the students are mm -hmm. sort of used to C programming right. I just want to show them that how what you do in C actually maps to this thing ok. I mean, I will just show you saying you can see it for yourself, ok. So, let me look at this, ok. On the left, I am writing a C program x, okay. comma y, two integers, yes, ok. And then I have z, ok. I am saying z equal to x plus y, I see it. yes, ok. Ok. Now, ignore everything else that is here, you just observe this add, add operation, yes. ok. It is doing. So, actually what is this doing? If you look at this, before that it is doing something called MOV which is moving. What is it doing? It is simply moving the data from the memory into my compute engine. It is just exactly doing a move operation of the data from memory to my compute engine. Okay. And then what do I do? I simply do add x plus y, right. So, if you if even here move edx. Mm -hmm. Right, it is doing two moves, it is getting n1, n2, n2 into its compute engine <laughs> and then performing the add. Yeah. Now, 
what if I change this sorry uh, sorry what is happening here yeah yeah what if I make this subtract mm. okay you That's will see right. nothing changes the move is happening exactly yes the subtract is now happening Separate. on this right yeah. now likewise I will change this to multiplication you see yeah. something called IML, IML. right I yeah. will change this to division this is thing, right so what yeah. you see here is actual machine level code that is being executed in this particular desktops microprocessor right mm -hmm. and that essentially has all these instructions right so the beauty with a digital computer is you can now program it right and choose to do whatever you want with it you can do addition subtraction division anything like you said filtering ultimately is some mathematical sequence of operations yeah. you can choose to do that here right and this is just to tell you you know i am not we are not telling students what this these things yes. mean but yes. just the fact that i'll just i just like to point out that i div for example maps to a hardware in the computer that does division absolutely imul does is a hardware that does multiplication right so there are various blocks like this which mm -hmm. you can put into a compute engine and what should you do you move data from memory to the compute engine compute and obviously you cannot keep everything there so you send it back, send to, the it memory, back to the memory right so just a sequence of move operations addition subtraction <laughs> multiplication division allows you to do anything you want with absolutely digital right. and you can <coughs> probably do more complicated see for example i'm thinking <coughs> now that resist uh, we did addition mixing using resistors yeah. but we saw that capacitors and inductors do some integration correct right yeah. integration and differentiation exactly you can do the same thing here in the digital absolutely way. you can do right. it right you can use numerical techniques yes. of uh, integration differentiation and so on and eventually get the so answer out practically any analog operation exactly that needs to be done can be done in practice can be done in the digital domain can be done in the digital domain right so just to sort of you know close the loop here right we said okay the uh, analog computed value right yes. now if i if i actually so what is the difference between the analog compute and throwing in a digital compute in that chain right mm -hmm. earlier the answer 407 millivolt is yes. what would have gone to that speaker yes right and the sound would have been produced based on that but now the moment i throw in a digital computer yes i have a code right i'm saying i'm not even i'm not yes. even talking of circuit 2 yes. i'm talking of circuit 1 yes it is getting quantized to a code 4 which is 400 right which is 400, 400 millivolt million. because yes. this dac is going to do exactly the opposite you make right. x to y y to x <laughs> you will get the digital to analog conversion Correct. right so this 4 will eventually translate to 400 millivolt that goes out onto the speaker as Correct. opposed to 407, 407 millivolt right so that much error you will have absolutely right but now i can don't need to stick to a 3 bit uh, adc exactly levels. if i get uh, an 8 bit adc 8 bit adc uh, that's about uh, we're talking of uh, 16, 256 sorry, 256, levels. 256, levels, 256 levels right so now i'll get very little difference exactly you can bring that difference down to a couple of millivolt yes. right which yes. basically does not matter you cannot even make that out in the you know right. thing. And if you look at the ADCs that are there on these uh, computers, they are like 16 bit and so on, by right, the way. That's right. So, therefore, you can, that error is effectively negligible, yes. right? Uh, and on the other hand, if you went to the digitally computed value of the sum and divide by 2, that could have been 0, 1, 1, which is 300 millivolt from yes, here. Yes, correct. Now, that could be a big error, but as you said, it's because of, I chose a 3 bit because you chose a 3 bit, three -bit ADC. The minute right? you go to a 8 bit representation, this will also be small. This will also be small. It yeah. doesn't matter if you send out uh, 46 millivolt or 42 millivolt. Exactly. That is, that's, it's that level that we are going to deal with, right? So, uh, you know, as I, as I mentioned, there is a lot of overhead in this uh, 
you know bringing compute into the digital computer but of course like we have discussed enough storage is a big yes advantage actually i am old enough to remember the days when we used to use <coughs> cassette tapes to store in analog mode exactly and then replay and then replay right? right so this is just so much more convenient exactly because you can do so many more things with the exactly. data right exactly. now let's just you know just uh, uh, conceptually understand now what happens if this v1 and v2 were not digital signals they are mm. actual let's say audio signals coming from a mic mm -hmm. right then you need to do you know the sample and hold yes right we fast enough fast enough to get both v1 and exactly. v2 exactly those are all circuit level uh, circuit level constraints and mm. also for every value that you sample you will yes. get an adc output exactly. that needs to be stored in the memory exactly and this is what we calculated that wave file size yes right and we showed that we actually get that Correct. nearly that same number right so it's just a question of repeating this operation now again and Correct. again and again or maybe for every channel you <coughs> might want to have a separate adc That's so if you have eight channels you might want to have eight adc absolutely so that you do everything in one go simultaneously exactly right that's the alternate way of doing it yes. but in any case you either are increasing the complexity by adding more hardware adcs right or you are having to like you know multiplex this get it you know it's some some complicated thing so why is the digital computer so popular in 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 recent times i think that is the one question that i'd like to sort of uh, allude to and then wind up this discussion on the digital computer right sure. so what is what is your guess apart from storage mm. so um probably if i had to in terms of so let's see if i want to let's say add subtract many many voltages yeah maybe power efficiency size yeah size yeah that's definitely something but uh uh again you need more memory you need that's you true. know the power of the memory and you know all those uh, right. things come into picture but i think there is one other interesting aspect right let us in terms of what is the voltage that we are dealing mm. with you know we have been dealing with bits yes. but ultimately when you say 0 or 1 we are talking about let's say 0 or 1 volt that's true yes each one of these bits is a 0 or a 1 each bit right so what 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 we mean is you take this b0 b1 b2 right yes. each of them is going to be 0 or 1 volt it doesn't have to be 1 volt but 1 volt is a representation a representation right <laughs> it is some range but effectively so the 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 distance between 0 and 1 volt is huge huge right, right. so even if i add like some couple of millivolts of noise here yes i cannot make a zero look like a one that's right right just conceptually it requires a huge amount of noise for me to make zero look like one on the other hand if i took an analog signal which was 400 millivolt and the other analog value was 410 millivolt with 10 millivolt noise i can actually make it change the level change the level That's right true. whereas in digital the noise immunity is very significant right and it uh, it takes a lot of effort to understand this we would have to go to uh, a different course called digital systems correct where it will be done in great detail but just conceptually noise immunity is something that makes the uh, the digital systems very robust very robust very robust right earlier uh, just in analog compute it would be it would be very hard to actually you know uh, and going going back to your tape mm -hmm. analogy right mm -hmm. you take an audio tape and you look at it after 10 years the amount of noise that could have been introduced is yes. actually significant absolutely right That's whereas if it's a digital signal the digital data can go from one computer to another Seems if the if the hard disk is not corrupt correct. right correct you can actually get exactly the same information down 10 years down the line that right right so uh, with that i think we can wind up our discussion on the digital front here right uh, because beyond this we need to go into many more details that's right, right? and they'll be doing it in the next course exactly in the next course so uh, i think with that we can wind up this discussion and uh, move on to the next topic in the coming weeks yes thank you thank you